This is a train made from everyday items designed to break the scale sound barrier. I originally wanted to see how fast a scaled down train could go using pneumatics, which involved using an interesting system of a vacuum tube, a piston and magnetic couplings to pull a train along using only air pressure. As it would happen though, things soon got out of hand and I ended up accidentally building a hyperloop that would transverse point A to point B in just a couple of seconds. <laughs> that was ridiculous! Getting these trains to work smoothly though ended up being quite the challenge and there would be multiple issues to solve before I got to see just how fast my vacuum trains would travel along a 50 foot test track. I knew if I could draw on my experience of other high speed projects I had a good chance of one of these trains breaking the scale speed of sound which even for one of these 148 size scale models is still very ambitious. So how would I build a vacuum powered train? Well it's quite simple really. The idea is to build a train track above a vacuum tube and this has a piston in it which basically moves up and down due to differing air pressures and this piston or thrust carriage if you want to call it that can be coupled to a train above the tracks using high strength magnets. So this concept is actually a really old idea but due to limitations in technology it never really caught on in a big way. However, just before getting started on building my vacuum train, I found out about a company in California called Flight Rail, who are doing pretty much exactly the same thing. As I still had many questions about magnetic couplings, sealing the tube and how to control the trains, I travelled all the way over to the US to learn from the experts in the hope that I could steal some of their secrets. John, who worked for Flight Rail, was very kind to show us all over the facility, which is also a vineyard, and let me have an up close look at their 1-6 scale model train built to demonstrate what vacuum powered trains can do. We're using air pressure or a, a partial vacuum to either pull or push a piston through a sealed tube and then we have the passenger modules which are coupled to that piston magnetically and uh, one of the advantages to this system is because there's no reliance on traction it can climb grades that are steeper than any conventional train. The trains operate using a remote control that actuates stationary air pumps along the track and it can also apply the train's brakes, although the trains can be atmospherically braked as well, which, as you'll see later, is a pretty cool side effect of controlling your train with air. The trains use high-strength neodymium magnets on both the thrust carriage and the passenger cars themselves and are finally set up to run along the track with minimum drag. Right, well that was interesting. Let's go and build a small version back at my workshop. Returning to the UK, I was excited to finally get cracking on the build. Firstly, I needed to figure out what I was going to use as the vacuum tube. For the tube, I thought about using PVC tubing, but instead opted for clear acrylic so that I could see what was going on on the inside. Then I got to work designing and 3D printing some supports that could hold the tubes up. For the rails, I used some aluminium that would be spaced apart for some O-gauge sized trains. O-gauge trains are scaled to 148 scale, so to do a scale 100 miles an hour, a train of this size would have to travel just over 1 meters a second. Our target was over 700 miles an hour, so we'd need to build some more track later on, but this was a good start. The next thing is to design the piston, which is going to go inside the tube. Up to this point, I don't actually know whether this is going to to work so I need to build this thing and get it working as quickly as possible. There's no point building more of the train itself or anything else or more track until we've proved that I can at least pull this thing along with a vacuum cleaner. Oh that's not a nice noise. I'm glad I made these wheels adjustable as I really need to tune this thing to fit just perfectly into the tube. Okay we've got one of these carriages, it's got some magnets on it. If we put it on the rails, it is now connected to the thrust carriage. Well, it all seemed quite promising at this point. Let's see if we can actually move a carriage using air pressure alone, using me as the power source. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, well, it seems to be working. Why don't we try and hook a vacuum up to this thing to suck it along rather than blow it along? Whoa! <laughs> 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 
that thing really moved. This is really making me excited about the rest of the project. <laughs> Instead of simply propelling any old O-gauge carriage down the track, I wanted to build a custom high-speed train from scratch. So I started by assembling some wheels and axles from random components I had lying around. Next I bolted these to some more aluminium, and soon I had a rolling train that could be pushed along the track. There was a big problem though. Well, I suppose I'm going to have to fix this. I found out that although these flanged wheels certainly look like train wheels, they had a key difference which makes them absolutely useless for a high-speed train. You see, train wheels actually have a carefully designed geometry to them, so the flanges almost never rub against the rail. Instead, as the train moves, the centre of gravity combined with this tapered shape self-centres the wheels so they can be super efficient and have a super small contact area. With some new 3D printed wheels, the train chassis now ran much more smoothly. Next, I finished the train with a body to turn it into a proper train, not forgetting to add the names of my Patreon supporters as a thanks for helping to supply all of the materials for this build. If you want to join my little Patreon team in the description down below, then you can do so and help me to build bigger and bigger projects. End of message, thank you very much. Time for the next test to see what needed improving. And yes, unfortunately, I found out I need to do quite a bit more work. Although initially the piston design looked looked promising. It turned out with the high tolerances I'd built into the 3D printed seals to the tube, there was way too much friction, as this thrust carriage kept rubbing against the sides of the tube. I adjusted the wheels and tried different magnet combinations, but often the magnetic coupling would release as the train passed over the joints in the acrylic tubes. So this is the join here. This is going to be a bit of a problem, I think. I think what I'll do is just come back tomorrow with a fresh start and design something completely different with regards to the thrust carriage because what we've got now isn't really working. We need a different approach. I ended up redesigning the ends of the thrust carriage to be more tapered and actually decrease the overall diameter to have less of a tight seal with the tube. This would result in a more inefficient design with more air being able to pass around the piston, but it's just an example of one of those times in engineering where you have to make a compromise. Hey, yes! Well, I finally got this thing working, just about. Although I hadn't made enough track yet to really let this train stretch its wheels, I set up the train outside to see what sort of scale speeds it could get up to with the power turned up. The train ran decently enough, but it seemed a little sluggish. And I soon realised what might be the reason. I'd completely forgotten to change the bag on the vacuum cleaner since using it to clean my workshop. And let's just say the difference when empty was quite extreme. The piston was now detaching from the train as the magnets weren't strong enough to deal with the sudden power of the vacuum. Maybe we're going to have to throttle this thing a little bit. So that piston on its own was pretty fast, and this gave me an idea of how I could take this whole vacuum powered train to the next level. I wanted to build a second train that would fit within the tube, turning the vacuum railway into a sort of hyperloop. I put together another thrust carriage, but this time gave it some angled ends and drew on some windows to make it look the part. Next Next I added an FPV camera so I'd be able to drive the train along from a first person perspective using a pair of video goggles. This camera is the sort of thing that you get on drones and can wirelessly transmit video signals to a screen fitted inside a headset so you can see exactly what the train sees. Next I wanted to solve the problem of needing to throttle the train to make starting and stopping a bit more gentle. So I made a simple train controller using a valve that could be opened and closed smoothly to have greater control over the air pressure within the tube. This would also allow me to do something pretty cool and use atmospheric braking to rapidly deaccelerate the train. Right, now we have loads and loads and loads and loads of track all set up in here because it's a bit rainy outside now. But I have the Hyperloop car and we've put it inside the tube and I just want to do a quick test with the new train controller. Knowing me, I'm going to break something. With the new controller, it was now super easy to start and stop the vehicle in the tube, and the atmospheric braking worked like a dream. 
So this was all looking very promising, but how fast would each train go with the power turned up to full on an even longer test track set up outside? What eye-watering scale speeds could they achieve? And would either of the trains go supersonic? Right, before we give this thing a test, you might have been wondering, how do I design all of the 3D printed parts for my projects? Well, I've actually been using SolidWorks recently, and helpfully, they are actually the sponsor of this week's video. I designed all of the 3D printed parts for this project in SolidWorks, and it's probably perfect for bringing your projects to life too. What's really cool is that SolidWorks is now providing a special software for makers with professional grade tools for your hobbies and personal projects, and it's just $99 a year or $9.99 a month. For this, you'll get both their locally installed and online design software with online tools for designing, fabricating, and rendering, and much more. There's also an active online design community where you can connect with fellow makers, share your work, learn, and get inspired. As you explore the maker offer, you'll have access to a dedicated online support community to help with any questions you may have. Please note that 3D Experience SolidWorks for Makers is not for commercial use though, and is limited to a maximum of $2,000 profit per year. Elevate your maker game on your terms without compromise and within your means. See the links in the video description below to save 20% and learn more about the maker offer. All right, thanks SolidWorks. Now let's push this thing to the limit and see how fast it can really go. I wanted to see what the top speed of both the standard train and the Hyperloop would be on maximum power. Got the trains, got my GoPro. <laughs> but first we needed to make sure that they work smoothly on the newly set up track, which was a little hard to get straight. We now have an extra four meters of track, so that makes this whole thing 14 meters. Suddenly, a huge, potentially fatal problem for this project emerged. The train kept derailing. Is it expanding? Yeah, I wonder if it's expanding because of the heat. Yeah, maybe the heat is actually affecting the distance of the rails. We did some investigating and discovered what was the culprit. That's a bit annoying. The sun was heating the black 3D printed rail tie parts, which was actually warping the rails and changing the distance between them. Yeah, it just keeps falling in. It keeps falling into the rails. Or falling in between the rails. Repeated tests showed the train would travel along, fall between the rails, and this would cause the piston to become uncoupled. So this was pretty frustrating. Maybe 3D printing these parts was a bad idea. For now, we altered the spacing of the rail ties and tried again until we got some more success. At least we got to the end of the track. So how fast was it looking? Had we got a decent speed? Well, it wasn't looking too impressive, but we'd have to do some analysis later on after testing the Hyperloop to work out the results of both trains. Now let's see how the Hyperloop camera works and whether I can uh, control the Hyperloop using the FPV goggles. Okay, ready? Three, two, one. <laughs> that was ridiculous. <laughs> that was a weird feeling. I just saw all of these like pillars just go vuh, 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 vuh. wow. That was super cool. That was like I just entered a wormhole or something. Now it was time to push it up to the max. Would it beat the scale sound barrier? All right, we've got Mike here who's helping. Yep. You're going to be holding the Hyperloop. Just at the end, right? Just at the end, just so we can build up the suction mm -hmm. <laughs> until there's enough pressure. Mm -hmm. And then we'll see if that gives it a couple of extra miles an hour. Yeah. Increasing the thrust now. <laughs> Yeah, that seemed pretty good. There's a quite a lot of pull. Back in the office, we analysed the footage. Bangor. Point what? Nine. 848 miles an hour scale speed. Wow, is that wow. the fastest train ever? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we've done it. In a testament to the power of a vacuum, the scale Hyperloop hit a scale speed of over 761 miles per hour. Nice. Becoming probably the fastest DIY Hyperloop in the world. The more conventional train didn't fare quite as well at just 362 miles an hour, but this was still way more than most real world trains. So I'd count this as a success, especially with some pretty major problems of the distorted rails holding it back, which I'd imagine would probably be quite a serious problem on a full size train. 
Well, I'm not sure if I'm going to be building a real Hyperloop anytime soon, and I'm not sure if anyone is either at that rate, but I certainly enjoyed building this one. A very big thanks to Flight Trail for their help with this project, and there's a link down in the description if you want to find out more about them. There's also a link down there for my Patreon, so if you want to get your name in every single one of my videos on each vehicle that I build, then you can sign up to my Patreon with a link in the description as well. Of course, big thanks to SolidWorks for sponsoring the whole video, and if you want to see another Project Air video, then here's one right here that I think you might be interested in if you got to the end of this video. So thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.